so much stuff happening. I will kind of push it. I guess I'm lucky. Not everyone that is a prison that is guilty, but we have a university center criminal. Every week, the Choice TV team meets to throw out ideas for the questions for solutions. The meetings are usually quite interesting, with heated debate, informative discourse, and a fair share of laughter, with some solutions that should never, ever make it to national TV. These ideas are based on current issues and problems facing the country, as well as personal encounters and experiences. This week, we narrowed our ideas down to the currency used to quote the price of land in St. Lucia, and the disproportionate number of imported goods on the market, as opposed to local ones. Hi, I'm Shane. Welcome to another episode of Solutions. Answers from the people. Simple solutions offered by St. Lucians. One of our team members was browsing through a magazine and happened upon an ad for real estate in St. Lucia. Nothing strange about that, except that the price for the property was quoted in US dollars. A little bit of searching found similar ads and posts for property here with exorbitant prices in US dollars. The conversion of the prices left us wondering, who in St. Lucia can afford these properties? We asked the people, what is your solution to curb the rising cost of property in St. Lucia? Let's hit the streets and hear what the people had to say. Maybe you should um, allow us to um, get um, an easier way to get loans through the bank, so maybe we'd be able to buy some property easier. I have to, to do something for the, for the people. So if I don't mind to buy, to buy a spot, so I mean, you're supposed to put me somewhere to, to live. What I think, to, if I can afford to bring down the, um, the tax, the value of the tax, the value of the land, bring a little lower down, then if I have a little thing, so far I can see if I can buy it or what, what, what not. But the fact is, really, the fact is, to me, everyone in St. Lucia, every people in St. Lucia, supposed to have a piece of land for themselves. All the piece of land, build a little house whatsoever, and to feed the family, have a family inside together. Well, they have um, crown lands. You know, you could go through the government to see if, the, if there's any cheaper piece of land for, for, for you to buy or whatever. Also, the foreigners that are in St. Lucia, if they're tired of living in St. Lucia and they want to leave or desist or whatever, you never know. They might have um, family overseas that doesn't want to stay in St. Lucia or somewhere else and they want to sell the land as quick as possible. So that's another solution too. Incentives on the land? Because it's cheaper to buy a car in St. Lucia. The, because the banks just call for um, loans, for cars, but they don't call loans for land in St. Lucia. Yeah, because with the foreigners, they give them... Um, they will give them incentives, they will give them discounts, but hey, to, 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 if you buy a car now, go to the bank, the bank call you, but to buy a piece of land? No. I think they should um, bring down the price of the land, because a piece of land right now, they, a, good, a, a good price of land up there, 15, 200 a, a square foot. And then right now, sometimes you don't want a big piece of land, you want a little just for a little house only. I don't want a big piece of land, I just want a, a, a 2,000 square foot, but they say right now the minimum is 10,000 square foot. Well, the solution is, um, I don't want to put it on government, huh? But at least government have to try and help help those that are working and help try to help them all. No matter how small it is, how it is to assist. The government should do something that the poorer class of people can live as a normal people. So the government can do something to reduce the, 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 the price of the land that the poorer class can own a little piece of land and can build their dream home. That's all well, um, I have been hearing, I've, or I've heard before that there's um, land for everybody to get a piece. Now, if um, the foreigners are coming and offering more, it makes it more difficult for St. Lucians to get a piece of land. Because naturally, um, you would um, you sell for the foreigner because you know that you can raise the price. Where, and whereas the, the, the St. Lucia now, you cannot meet that price that you're going to um, ask the foreigner. So it is really a question of, boy, um, where there should be some control on the sale of land. I, I think that might be the way to go. I don't know if it's possible, but to me that is the way to go, to try and um, have people to earn a piece of St. Lucia. Maybe that is the way we have to go, try and put a cap on it. These were just some of the answers from the people. We'll take a break now. When we come back, more solutions.
Welcome back to Solutions. We asked the people for a solution to curb the rising cost of property in St. Lucia. The development I live in, Carolina Developments, the government have a lot of land where they can put the infrastructure and charge people a reasonable rate. Because this thing about UDC building houses, in fact, the little toilets they build and tell your houses, and they said to you at exorbitant prices, that, that doesn't work. Because the average person wants a, a, a comfortable place that's, that's home with the basic amenities and transportation and all that. So if the, the government have a lot of land in certain areas where they can develop, invest in money, that'd be revenue for them, they cry no revenue. Um, I think maybe there needs to be more um, housing development plans, for example, what you have in, in, in Castries, those kind of CDC type buildings, maybe are more affordable you know, for, for, for local people to, to, to gain access to housing. Um, I think that um, there's land all around the island that has not been utilized that maybe government can start to acquire those lands and start to develop them and, and, and give, them, give some, con some kind of concessionary rate to um, St. Lucians to have to own their, their own buildings. I think that also opened up the whole economy, you know, bringing it out into the, into the districts of St. Lucia, not, con not constricted to, to the Castries region. I think it's a very simple thing to do and that I, it will take some funds, some money to do, but government will have to bite the bullet and, and, and undertake those kind of projects to, to, to make things better for us. As a solution, I would think, again, the government need to understand that there are persons who are in need, um, low income, no income, some income, but they are human beings also. And as things happen, it's always the poor that suffers the most because any one of us, if we had enough money, we'd build a nice house on the mountainside, not close to the river's mouth. But the truth is, it exists and something must be done. And I, I don't want to face a catastrophe uh, where we have persons who have lost their lives because of living too close to the river. In, in the 80s, we had a land registration drive in the country that allowed people to be able to identify their properties and so forth. I still believe that there is a lot of, there's much more land in St. Lucia that we can utilize in order to um, allow uh, peasants or poor people to have a spot or a home. That was our first set of solutions. For our second question, we looked at the supermarket shelves. The majority of items are imported, sometimes of up to five different brands of the same item. While it's understandable that some items have to be imported because they can't be produced or grown here, there were many items made from raw materials available right here that are still imported. We asked the people, what is your solution to create and maintain a more successful local manufacturing sector? I say we have mangoes, banana, we can do things and send it. Uh, lots of big things, what we have to do, we have to look for the market and because what we, what we have, that's what we have to cultivate. So it is important. So market we need now, we need to talk to the ministers and prime ministers and see how we can do our best in St. Lucia because we need things like that. Um, to be honest, I don't think much can be done at this point. 
Uh, we didn't try following the words of Sir Arthur when we had the chance. I think we missed that opportunity. So I think right now we're just going to have to keep pushing on with tourism and just continue doing what we're doing. We need to do more marketing. So before you can sell anything, you need a market for it. So we need to encourage a home market to eat what we produce and the excess look to sell to the um, other Caribbean islands to begin with. We the people cannot really do anything. It has to do with the government. No, the government themselves do not like, they do not come together with people to talk anything. So I believe it's the government that have to do something about that. There is no factory in St. Lucia. How could you make your own things? You understand? If you have a factory, you can translate that factory in uh, many kind of different ways. You can make mango juice, lime juice, you understand? But nothing can happen. You understand? You can do nothing now. So long as they have government have money to do that, they should. It's that, like that will survive. If it's not that, nothing can happen. Nothing can, can be done. I'm not sure if this is a solution, but I think, uh, first of all, our people need to be more creative. Our people need to understand, listen, we need to come together. First of all, our people, especially at this time of independence, I urge St. Lucians to come together in many spheres, whether they be sportsmen or we and women, whether be, they be farmers, whether they be the business, all groups and agencies, educators, first come together and then let us begin to think out of the box. Let's begin to think of ways we can, we can manufacture, ways we can make things happen for us. Copying, we copy too much. I mean, let's take an example of what I call the, the, the t-shirt syndrome. Everybody sells t-shirts. It cannot work like that. So if you see this person, and the same thing happens in small communities, that person sees a way to make money. Um, let me open a rum shop. Everybody else in a small community opens a rum shop. So we have to learn to come together and begin to think differently. I would more ap appreciate like if they have more factories, open more factories and employ more workers so that they can import it to wherever you say they have to send it to. Okay, because especially me, my two hands is mine. I love doing a lot of things, like doing jam, doing tumbling balls, doing tablet, all that is mine. I love doing these things, these are my hobbies. More solutions coming up after this break. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Solutions on Choice TV. We ask the people, what is your solution to create and maintain a more successful local manufacturing sector? Okay, what, what I see that we should do in St. Lucia, and that should start, they should start that a long time ago, because right now it could happen, but if we had started 30, 40 years ago, now we would see good results. Because what I'm seeing right now with the tourism industry, it's going down. When I say it's going down, I mean visitors will be coming in, but what happened is that we wouldn't be surviving how we used to survive on tourism. So what I myself do, I'm going into agriculture, which I was already in it a, a few years ago, and it's paying me. So what I'm seeing that could change the vibe around, that we should, we should go into agriculture, and the people that, is in, that is in charge should see that our fruits and vegetables, our crops, are not staying and waste that they should invite people from out there come in and build a factory or something and for locals to be bringing in these fruits and these vegetables buy it from us um, uh, we, we sustain St. Lucia and the hotels and we send the rest overseas and I think that would help out the economy that will help out the youths and them because nothing beats a trial unless you start something so what I'm advising the government and those who are in for it now is to start working on to bring foreign investors, people that could afford to bring factories and machines that could utilize these fruits and vegetable and to, to produce our own stuff. Because we're independent and we have nothing. 
We have nothing producing. We had bananas and it went to, to red. But we still, rem we still stand a chance because if we go to agriculture full time, I think our nation will be able to feed our nation and feed other people from overseas because the times are getting hard. We cannot put all our eggs in the same basket. We'll have to go to agriculture. That is our only solution now. I would think that we need managerial skills concerning manufacturing, basically. Then we can move forward, create employment, because we have the things necessary, the resources, the fruits being wasted. For example, Barbados don't have as many fruits as we have, like the mangoes. And they have their own production line, manufacturing juices coming to St. Lucia. You know, this makes our import bill higher because we don't, you know, utilize what we have to get production going and also employment. These are basically what we need, managerial skills so that we can use it efficiently and get people occupied and then our employment rate will be reduced. The matter of fact, you don't have to export it. All we have to do is just have a, a base whereby we have the fruits growing. All we have to do is develop it as for wet days, like in the wet season. They come during season, right? It's off season, you can't get it. So preserve it or something and it's like we have it in abundance. We care for to send overseas and we need it here. All we have to do is care for it here and hold it back and make sure we have it for our people here. Because in the, we have lots of things we see here. Mangoes, for instance. In a mango season, you drive all over the island, you see flies and bananas. You could can that and, you know, make banana bread, you know. Well, to me, I think the government should put something in place for those kind of fruits and vegetables that go to waste. They should build factories because right now the job is the job employment is very low at um, in Saint Lucia. So to me, I think they should build more factories, give the young people jobs to do. Yes, and use those things like mangoes, guavas, put them to good use. Well, John, honestly, I think I haven't seen too many um, fruits wasting especially when we're in mango season. Um, I recall well, that during the days of the Grenada Revolution, I used to see mango juice, sour sub juice, all of these things coming in, and I know we have more, than, uh, more of that than Grenada. I find it's very strange that we have not moved in that direction. At least to try and get some kind of canning um, factory to come down here and to can these things for us. I'm sure that would buff our economy in some way or the other and would create some kind of jobs. I, I really don't know what we are waiting for to do it, but I think that is the way to go. And of course, you, the farmers um, would, um, of course, they talk about diversification. That's a form of diversification. They would move into different areas. We have seaweed, we have, um, we have um, guavas, we have pineapple, you name it. We've got a lot of stuff. Yes, that's, that's the way to go. Because, I mean, maybe we don't have the, the funds and money to, to do what we want to do. But if outside people could come in, and do and put factories and do juices and and so on that will be a good thing there must be an avenue to sell stuff so even when you manufacture or you encourage people to and there is no way for them to sell these goods what is the point so i have 20 mango trees behind my house and i'm going to can mangoes who am i going to sell it to and who's going to buy it we have literally one distributor one major distributor and to Engage in cottage industry, vitae vi for the sake of cottage industry, when it's cheaper to get it out of Trinidad or wherever else, is it's a beautiful thing to say, oh, let's support local. But really and truly, where are we selling it? That's it from the people today. Let's wrap up. Land is one of our most precious assets, and its price is determined by its value. In some rural societies, it is considered to be a common good, something gifted by God and used for the benefit of all to satisfy the needs of food and shelter. It belongs to everyone and no one. Therefore, it is non-transferable and as such has no value. A commodity which is infinitely available has no direct value. But when that same commodity becomes scarce and users compete for it, it develops an exchange value. For example, you don't have to pay for air. However, if clean air becomes scarce, you will have to start paying for purified air. In a strictly Marxist context, value can only exist as a result of an effort to produce a commodity. 
but if there is no actual use of it, it still has no real value. Let's look at that in terms of land. Take the Rodney Bay Raidway area, for instance. Some years ago, the entire area was just swamp land infested with mosquitoes, and no one would really buy that. The area was filled up, a marina was built in the lagoon, and hotels popped up on the surrounding beaches. Today, it is some of the most expensive and desirable real estate in the country. Now, three main factors can determine the value and, by extension, the price of land. Location. The most important factor in the value of a piece of land is its location. As a rule, the closer a piece of land is to a population center, the greater its value. Surroundings. A small lot on a west-facing slope with a view of a winding river in the valley below and the sunset in the distance will have a high price, even though the river, the valley, and the sunset are not part of the property. As opposed to a property next to a landfill or a busy highway or an industrial park, which will be less desirable for residency and therefore have a lower price, even if the property itself is superior. Also, the condition. Fertile agricultural land will be worth more than dried up soil. Healthy forest will be worth more than clear-cut forest. And land that has superior or unusual aesthetic appeal, like being part of a World Heritage Site, for example, will have a higher value than typical lots with no particular features. Right now, our island is viewed as paradise by foreigners who are tired of their smog-filled, noisy European and North American cities. It's scary to think that very soon, the average St. Lucian may not be able to afford a piece of St. Lucia to call their own. It's already happening in Barbados, with the price of property skyrocketing so high, limiting purchase to foreign investors, expatriates, and the one percenters. Now, why is the manufacturing sector so important to small economies like our own? When you look at our balance of trade, we import more than we export, putting us in a never-ending trade deficit. We spend more money outside the country than we have coming in. A successful manufacturing sector has to do two things. First, produce the goods that the people of the country needs so we don't import as many products. And secondly, produce more than we need for local consumption to be able to export to other countries. Sounds easy, right? It's not always so simple. We first have to encourage consumption of local products to the point where we don't need to import outside ones. For that to happen, we have to manufacture goods of equal or better quality than the imported ones. The quality also impacts on exports, since great quality products are welcome all around the world. I once had an interview with Mr. Ronald Ramjatan, Managing Director of the very successful Baron Foods Limited, which now exports its wide range of products all over the world. The one thing he kept repeating as a key factor on the company's success, consistent high quality. The Baron Foods daily mantra, maintain a high international standard of quality. Now, if all local manufacturers can do that, will be well on our way to successful manufacturing sector. That's it for today. If you have something to say, we want to hear. Look out for the Choice TV crew for a chance to present your solution to the country. Now, if you have a burning question you want us to ask the people, we can do that too. Send us an email with your hot burning issue at solution at choice39.tv. That's S-O-L-U-C-I-A-N at choice39.tv. Join us again next week for more solutions. Not everyone that is a prison that is guilty, but we have a university center criminal.